live from Orlando, Florida, it's theCUBE, covering Accelerate 19. Brought to you by Fortinet. Hey, welcome back to theCUBE, live from Fortinet Accelerate 2019. I'm Lisa Martin with Peter Burris. You can hear all of the folks behind us on the show floor. There's about 4,000 people here in Orlando from 40 different countries. We're pleased to welcome to theCUBE for the first time, Warren Small, the Senior Vice President of Transformation and Security at Dimension Data. Warren, thank you so much for joining Peter and me on theCUBE. Thank you for having me, guys. It's a great so, pleasure. Lots of energy behind us. Let's go ahead and start out so our viewers get a, a view of Dimension Data, who you guys are, what you do, where you're headquartered. Yeah, absolutely. So first and foremost, thank you again for having me. Dimension Data, we are part of NTT, uh, headquartered out of London. So, uh, today we are a global organization with presence in every major country. As an organization, we have $8 billion in revenue and employ about 30,000 people. Um, I'm from Group Security. I'm responsible for transforming our business to be more solutions and outcome focused to help our clients with their digital aspirations. You're a channel partner in the operational technology space with Fortinet. Tell us a little bit about sort of the history of your partnership. Yeah, fantastic. So, I, so that's a new focus area for us, absolutely. Uh, but I mentioned that it has been a long time partner with Fortinet across the, the entire security portfolio. We've made a significant investment today and being very intentional around partnering with Fortinet for operational technology because we believe their fabric approach has a good ecosystem as articulated by by Ken and by Patrice this morning around the partners that they've sought to help clients address this operational technology risk. So one of the, one of the things I think it was Ken talked about this morning uh, is this notion of how the edge is going to be distinguished by different levels of trust. A little bit of background, so at Wikibon, we talk about how digital transformation is the process by which a business institutionalizes and operationalizes its it's uh, the, the role that data as an asset plays in its business. So we talk about data zones. Having a zone of data proximate to whatever event is going to take place. Ken talked about almost a zone of trust proximate to where an event's going to take place in OT. You're talking to an enormous number of customers about outcomes and then trying to match technology to those outcomes. How does that notion of a trust being one of the primary determinants and design elements for thinking about OT? Yeah, so it's an incredible question. Uh, thank you so much. So I think there are two ways to answer the question. So we have a philosophy around being secure by design. And by nature, being secure by design, there is inherent trust because we understand the client's business outcome. You know, today we faced with an incredible amount of innovation. I think we all want innovation. Everything that we do, you know, one of, the, one, one of the things I keep talking to my family about is how easy my job has become through innovation. You know, whether that's, you know, booking an airline ticket and downloading a ticket, but now we talk about the, the credibility of that airline. We talk about the credibility of the airline industry. We talk about the credibility of the transportation industry. It's not just the ticket. So when we're talking about the service and we talk about the integrity of the airline, it's all those pieces that are integrated. You know, nobody talks to you today about an OT outage when your bags are delayed. You know, nobody's talking to you today about an airline delay because there's been some water leak and an IoT sensor has detected the water leak and now they're trying to get emergency services to come and investigate the problem. So I think that's the challenge that you're faced with. And inherent in the secure by design, being a philosophy with all business stakeholders, business now have an appreciation that security is no longer that fear factor. You know, it's now an enabler of the business outcome that we want to deliver to our clients who are crying out for services. I might say it's even part of the brand, right? Absolutely. Uh, so you, know, you go back to systems theory and you talk about a competent interface, and a competent interface is performance, it's trustworthy, it behaves, it's designed, uh, it's monitorable, it's auditable, all those other things. And in many respects, as we move to a digital business, the fundamental tenet of competency is tied into how well the network retains a security profile 
so that the business can take on new options but serve customers the way it's expected to. Absolutely. So one of the things that I like telling my colleagues is when we see some of our you know, clients that are either in the oil and gas industry or critical infrastructure, when you go to a plant, they always talk about fatalities. They always talk about you know, how many incidents they have. It's that real. In cybersecurity today, in this digital attacks, you don't see it. But once you automate a system or you automate part of a plant, there could be some fatalities. I read an article recently about how you can manipulate data that says to a patient that they aren't really sick. Now I'm a, I'm a bit torn because you know, if I go to a doctor, you know, I want to be told there's something wrong with me. Maybe I don't want to know. But, but, but re in, in reality, I do want to know so I can take action. And that's the, that's the challenge that we face with today is that you know, this uncertainty of manipulation. This is uncertainty today because as we connect these two worlds to create better efficiencies or to provide that better service to the patient, all of a sudden is you creating more risks. You know, there are many stories I can share with you, you know, that, that are told to me or either our clients share with us of real life problems if an IoT device is not protected. And at most times, there's a device that's connected that nobody knows about. So how do you lead that conversation about security away from fear and more to, this is how we can help you stop being reactive and actually be proactive? Yeah, so you know, today we, as a team, you know, we talk about innovation. You know, today we talk about what if. We talk about the value of, you know, the way I do my job today. You know, I'm collaborating. The other day I did a count of just the number of apps that I use to make a phone call to have a meeting with somebody. You know, I've, I probably have about seven, and you could, you could count the same, you know, whether it's, you know, Vendor X or OEM Y. So, but I haven't have an innate level of trust that that vendor, that OEM, that's provided that application to me is, is trustworthy. So I download it and I get on my, my meeting. It's very much the same with the, the way that I communicate and collaborate with my peers, whether it's internally or externally. I, I no longer live with the fear that someone may steal my data because I know that there's a process in place and that we put a mechanism in place to make sure that critical data cannot be shared. Much the same with other aspects of technology. If we have the conversation of the value that can be derived if there is integrity. You know, I look around me and uh, it was interesting, I got into the elevator, yeah, and it's a pretty old elevator, right? But there's a level of trust that it was certified and that it is certified and it's validated that it works, right? So that's the only trust that I have because for those that know me, I'm pretty scared of elevators. <laughs> claustrophobic, right? Well, so, but I, I want to try to, using you as a proxy for a lot of users because uh, Dimension Data is deep into a number of global 500 companies and global 2,000 companies. Do you think executives really understand that crucial relationship between their digital business, their brand, and the role that security, networking, specifically security, will, how network and security, secure networking will impact their brand and their business? I think they, I think they starting to appreciate the, the impact. I think it's, it's much in the face now, you know, the numerous attacks that are out there. Uh, in fact, I was saying to some of my colleagues and some of my peers, uh, on Friday morning, I was on a conference call, and it was, it was completely, it was the first time that I was meeting an individual, and about three months before that, I had spoken to his CIO, uh, the employee's CIO, and I'd spoken to him about his challenges, and I was, you know, I was articulating the value of his brand, because they make, critical components of motor vehicles. And we were talking about what if that is a malfunction. So it then got down to this individual and we had a conversation and I, and I said to him, I said, you know, it was interesting what you shared with me because it almost sounded like I was having a conversation with you, but you were talking to me. So did your CIO ask you to take this action? It, it, it wasn't, it was a, it's just become a business problem that's being discussed at the boardroom level. 
you know, I think, you know, if, we, if you live in the US and, you know, um, like, like myself, you know, I'm, I've now become a, you know, a, 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 a a user of this thing called Amazon. Uh, my wife's a more frequent user myself, but we rely that a parcel is delivered at a certain time. A and we rely on the fact that if Amazon tells us it's going to be shipped and we will receive it, you know, my nine-year-old, he wants to have his Pokemon cards arrive on Friday, not on Saturday. So we have to rely that there is integrity in what they are sharing with us and that they have to realize that their partners have integrity in their systems, and they start, they're going to have to start demonstrating that these are secure systems, these are secure manufacturing plants, these are secure supply chain plants. But what is that C-suite, and I'm glad that you brought that question up, Peter, because I'm, I'm very, I'm always curious, this can't be a conversation anymore at, a, at the network security level, um, because it's so... Or just at the network exactly. security level. It's so pervasive, right? From a C-suite's perspective, what are the outcomes that that CIO has to deliver back to the business? I mean, you know, you mentioned healthcare a minute ago, and obviously that's an, an industry that affects every single person, whether the data is true or not, it affects all of us, but that CIO has to deliver outcomes so that that yeah. business, whether it's a hospital or an e-commerce vendor like an Amazon, has to deliver to meet their customers' needs. So how are, how is Dimension Data and Fortinet helping that CIO meet her or his business level objective so that business is competitive, is successful, et cetera? Absolutely, so a little bit about Dimension Data. So you know, we go to market with practices. So we have a digital business solutions practice uh, and we partner very heavily with our digital business solutions practice who work with clients around ideation. We work with clients around how they're going to transform their business. So when we talk about smart healthcare, what does that really mean to a user? You know, from a pharmaceutical perspective, from a hospital perspective, how does that really help? You know, we've got a number of use cases um, where we, can, we, we demonstrate to clients, you know, what's the value of providing better service to someone when they are, when they are first impacted or first injured? So if we can diagnose, we can detect, and we can communicate back to, be, be it the hospital or a healthcare provider, that's the service that has high integrity. And I'm going to subscribe to a healthcare provider or a healthcare practitioner that, sus that subscribes to a smart healthcare philosophy. You know, I'm a, I'm a traveling father, I'm a traveling husband, um, but the value for me is knowing that I'm always connected and the services that I subscribe to by providers have integrity. And that my wife doesn't have to provide you know, the details on a continuous basis to multiple providers. You know, I had a, I had a, very, a very emotional conversation once to an individual who shared you know, the, the impact of sharing data on multiple instances with multiple providers. It wasn't that they had to share, but it was the delay caused by having to share the information on multiple instances, and then the associated risk. You know, I always, I always talk about, you know, I gave you the example about sharing. You know, you know we talk about, and I tell my, my 13 year old, I say to him, you know, what don't you want me to know about you? So be <laughs> cautious what you share, right? So I got one quick question for you. Uh, we we're talking increasingly about uh, critical infrastructure, essential infrastructure. We got a, we're having more conversations in the cube, but it's not, broadly diffusing into the general population. And a lot of that is, one of the reasons for that is people think it's going to be unbelievably expensive. But it seems to me, and this is what I'm testing, that an investment in updating critical infrastructure so that you got better security, you got more networkability, you are using technology more appropriately, will also have the benefit that you can increase the optimization of the resources that are associated with that infrastructure. Is, is there, do you see that kind of, as you work with clients, do you see that kind of ameliorating trade-off where yes, we have to invest in these things, but there is a, there is a derivative benefit that we're going to increase the optimization of them? Absolutely. So, you know, I'll answer that in a, in a number of different ways, right? But the first one is, it is efficiency. And that's what everybody's driving towards. Can we get greater efficiency by integrating these two worlds? 
But as you said, what they don't realize is you can't just connect these two worlds without making sure that they are capable of being integrated. And, and that's the first stance that we take with a number of clients, irrespective of the industry that they're in is, you know, what do you know? And what do you think you know? Because if you have an understanding and you have a design of what needs to be enabled, or what needs to be remediated, and what needs to be changed, you can move a lot faster. And you know who to engage in terms of partnerships. You know, I was talking about that example earlier, there was absolutely you know, a case where the client knew immediately that if we connect these two worlds, the devices that facilitate the connection need to be replaced. Another example was you know, a client was implementing a software-defined network for all their plants. What they didn't realize was the technology would not enable that software-defined networking. So without a plan, which we've been extremely intentional in building what we call a cybersecurity advisory for operational technology networks, is to help our clients with that design and that plan and methodology to go and execute. Last question in about 30 seconds, no pressure. Yeah. A lot of growth, a lot of potential in the market that Kenzie, Patrice Persh talked about this morning during the keynote. What excites you about this momentum that their business growth is carrying into 2019? So, so I think, you know, a number of ways to answer, but 30 seconds. What I'm grateful for is how is Kenzie and Patrice articulated. And it's all about education. Um, if we have the right people, we can move faster. Second is that there's immense value in the integration of their fabric network. You know, we see a lot of value in the client conversations that we have today is, what do we have that we can leverage? How can we make it better as opposed to replace? That will give us the ability, you know, Patrice mentioned the, a stat of 50% of organizations have unfilled roles. You know, I think sometimes it may be greater because it depends on who we're measuring, right? And, what's, and what roles in these organizations. But the potential for us is incredible as a managed security service provider and a platform organization that we have the teamwork in Fortinet that allows us to co-invest in the platform that we are building to deliver better outcomes to our clients. Well, Warren, it's been a pleasure to have you on theCUBE with Thank Peter you. and it's me. Thank you, it's been a great pleasure to afternoon. talk to you. We look forward to hearing more great news from um, Dimension Data and 49 over the next year and years to come. Thank you so much, lovely to, lovely to be here. Our pleasure. For Peter Burris, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE.